What's going on everybody? Welcome to a new episode of Gallery Garage. Today I'm going to be installing a gooseneck to fifth wheel BMW hitch into the back of the fire truck flatbed. As you've seen in previous videos, or if you haven't seen yet, I got this BMW 22,000 pound gooseneck to fifth wheel hitch. See, it's got a little gooseneck in there, you drop it in and boom, fifth wheel. Okay, so this thing has to fit in here. As you guys know, I got the gooseneck weld in hitch in here and obviously there's a bed in the way so I got to cut a big hole in the bed here so I got to cut the hole I got to support it I got to frame it I got to make some kind of door or flap or something so that way I could still use the tow truck as a tow bed and I'll still be able to drag stuff up and it obviously there won't be a big hole here and then when I'm ready to tow fifth wheels or goosenecks boom open up the trap door and I drop the hitch in so I've seen other videos where welders are always wearing like this welding cap and the thing flappy sideways up or down. Uh, I got one. I've never had one and I'm going to give it a try. You wear your flap up or down or up. I just want to fit in. It's got polka dots on it and it says Alaska. I thought it was pretty cool. I could give it a shot. I'll weld with it and I've never had a problem without having a welding hat on. I have burnt my hair off a few times, so maybe that's why. All right, it's tomorrow. And what happened was yesterday, why I didn't get a lot of stuff done, was I took a lot of measurements. It took me like two hours to really think about the hitch, the trailers, everything, all clearances, and the hitch wasn't gonna fit. I'll show you why. The hitch is 11 inches tall from base to top, and that's right about here. Now the, the width of the bed is another two inches and that's a problem. The hitch has to at least be the height of the surface of the bed here. So we found out that if I didn't raise the hitch, the pin box on the fifth wheel of the fifth wheel camper was going to hit the bed. So if it's on the surface, not going to hit, obviously. So we have to figure out how to raise the hitch up two inches. This is not adjustable. This plate is not adjustable. I'd have to rebuild this entire plate. After looking at it, taking measurements, we found out that we can raise the sides of these rails up two inches. So here's the drawing. I marked out all the holes. If we are gonna bend this here, it's gonna dimple a little bit on all the holes. So I'm only gonna plasma cut this hole. As you can see on the drawing here, I have to cut the two brackets. And I'm gonna plasma cut that one. And then the rest of these I'm gonna drill with uh, Maggie the Mag Drill after these are cut and bent. So these two plates here are going to look like this tomorrow just two inches taller I don't know if I have gray powder coat but I try to make it look the same back to tomorrow now yes I'm modifying the hitch but I'm modifying it to be even stronger those plates are quarter inch. The new plate that I cut is 3 8 inch. So going up two inches with 3 8 inch is way overkill than what it needs. Yes, it probably breaks all the warranties and, and stuff on the BMW hitch, but does it look like I need a warranty? No. <laughs> so uh, I wanna keep going. The parts should be back soon, all bent up. So what I'm gonna work on now is getting the hole cut in the bed for some reason why it's really cold today. So I got my coveralls on, I got the waste oil burner going. You can see the little oil dripping in there. I don't know if you can see it. Barely any smoke coming out and this thing is hot. It's filled with nasty water and leaves, but you can see, if you can see it, it's steaming. If you guys wanna see another video on this waste oil burner, let me know. I'll make another video on it. Leave a comment below. I got the square marked out. What I did was because my measurements did not match. You know, this bed is like, almost 40 years old so it's not square at all it's it's off a little bit so i did test drills where my original measurements were and you can see i'm off a little bit there and that's the that's the hole that i'm going to follow right there and i did that you know the couple extra holes like that one i just fill in really quick so that's all right follow that hole that one actually worked out pretty good it's that hole 
and then I marked that is center right where the kingpin should sit. So I am actually going to use a circular saw to cut this aluminum. I'm going to use a non-ferrous blade and a lot of WD-40. Marked it with pencil because the WD-40 isn't going to wash the pencil away. If I used soapstone, it probably would have just washed away and I'd, I'd miscalculate my line. One thing you see I noticed, I moved the bed back. It's still level and so that way when I'm cutting, all the shavings aren't going to get all over the truck. I mean, it might get a little bit, but everything's going to come down and I'm able to access under here pretty well. so easily. I'm going to uh, take a quick peek underneath and make sure it's cutting, cutting right. Alright, everything looks good from underneath. I'm going to uh, keep going with my cut. Well then, there's one side done. Alright, if you guys think I'm crazy to use a circular saw to cut aluminum, Brad DeBerti and his dad, they have the show on Discovery Channel Twin Turbos. I believe it was like an inch and a half or maybe two inches thick solid aluminum and they use a circular saw with a lot of WD-40 to cut right through it. Slice like butter. Those guys, check out those guys. They do a lot of cool builds. They just built a SEMA truck with six wheels. That truck is awesome. Cut the hole. Oh man, that looks so good. Look at this. Got the hitch in, nice and level with the bed. Uh, it's not finished yet. I still have to build the hitch. This is uh, just two inch spacers in here so that way I could get the placement, make sure everything looks good. And look at that. That should work out perfect with the fifth wheel camper. Oh, I'm having such a good day. Up the elevator. <laughs> What's up, guys? Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and tell all your friends about this awesome channel. I appreciate you. Going back down. Boop. Oh, it's getting dark out, but uh, got to keep going. So this piece actually has to go up two inches here, like I said earlier. So we got this one-inch plate, and we're going to cut four six-by-six-inch spacers and we're gonna stack two of them together and that's gonna get all bolted together. So it's gonna be super strong. Get to see my dad use the torch. Hello. Got myself a straight edge here. Gonna use the torch. It's a nice piece of half inch plate and you put washers under it. So when you're cutting your torch, the flame can go in both either directions and it doesn't blow the flame sideways. So you get a nice straighter cut and it sits on here nice and flat. If you're gonna put them on, just put little tacks on them. Because if you put too much in there, then the plate warps. So you line that up. You get your torch lined up. Straight, right on the line. And there's your straight edge. You go right down the line. It's nice and easy. Nice and easy. Look at 
looks like a six inch square. <laughs> <laughs> Not so bad. That's a pretty clean cut. Not bad for by hand. Yeah. This was the technique before they had CNC plasma tables. Yes. And I'm pretty sure you've mastered it. <laughs> if you guys have any questions about torch use and you want my dad to answer them, leave a comment below. It works. Hear that noise? That's a really good noise. It means your tip is nice and clean. You can't have a dirty tip. <laughs> Got the waste oil burner going. Take a look on the inside. Glowing cherry red. It's nice and warm. So here's the four plates. One, two, three, and a four that uh, my dad just cut out. He wanted to show you how easy it is to use a torch to cut one inch thick steel. This thing I want to show you guys, this is a magnetic milling table. You can see how easy it is to move this one inch by six inch square. Turn this handle. Boom, it's stuck to the table. It's really good because when you're trying to grind small pieces and you need two hands on the grinder or if you're grinding for a very long time, this thing is great because it holds it to the table without needing clamps or anything like that super fast. So what I did was I beveled the four sides and I'm gonna take two of them and weld them together. So you got that nice bevel. I could get that nice thick weld in there and I could grind it smooth. And this is gonna be the spacer for in here, two inches. This is gonna go two inches up. You gotta drill the four holes in it for this bracket. And then, check these out. These are the side brackets. Got them bent up today. Same exact thing as these pieces, just two inches taller. And it's three eighths instead of quarter. So this thing is way overkill. Even though I'm modifying this hitch, it's only going up two inches, putting way overkill beefy metal on here. Not gonna have any issues with it. So I re-engineered the whole thing, two inches taller, exactly what I needed. The hitch is gonna match perfectly with the top of the bed. I'm excited. This is this whole dream that I've had for years in my head is finally happening. I'm gonna be able to tow a fifth wheel camper behind a fire truck, tow truck, toy hauler. This is exciting. Check out my hat. I'm a welder. That's a nice shiny weld. Now, if this was one inch and I was actually using it to like support a building, I would actually bevel like three quarters of an inch into this thing. But only because it's a spacer and I just wanted, I just want them to hold together. Nice little weld, just like that, it's perfect. Got Maggie the Mag Drill set up. If you haven't seen, this is Maggie the Mag Drill. It's like a 1985 Hogan drill with a Black & Decker motor. It's magnetic, I got my four holes lined up. This is a two inch plug drill bit and I'm gonna drill through two inches like it's nothing. I got my Crazy Larry secret lube. I got a garbage can underneath that helps catch a lot of the shavings. That's it. It works. Now we're ready to drill. That's it, the plug fell out. Just drilled through two inches of steel with this drill like it was butter. You better believe it. All right, both spacers are drilled four holes and it fits. Now I just gotta drill the side plates and it's gonna be time to test fit this thing. Very soon, very soon, I'm so excited. This is the base of the hitch. I got everything all just like temporarily bolted together and I still gotta put the top of the fifth wheel in. Guys, I got into the truck. Check it out. Whoa. That looks sweet. Got the two inches that I needed. It's flush with the top here. So now all I got to do is lift the camper up a little bit more. Go over, down a little bit, and clunk right in. Now this truck can tow fifth wheels. Look at that. That is awesome. It fits in there so good. 
I'm really glad that I left the box a little bit bigger because now I can actually stand down on the hitch plate and it helps getting the fifth wheel hitch out a lot easier. Just pull these two pins, pull these two pins, and whoop, out it comes. Now instead of standing up here, if you're a lot lower, it's better for the back because I got a bad back. That aside, take the bolt out, loosen the bolt, and then this one pulls right out too. Now I need to find a storage place for this. I'm gonna take it all apart, get it powder coated, and then get it back into the truck. I got one of the side brackets in, got it in my homemade powder coating booth. If you guys wanna see a whole rundown of how I built this thing, put a comment below and I'll make another video for you. Got the part all cleaned off with acetone, I'm using some super durable gloss black. Got an Eastwood powder coating gun. And then you hook up the ground and you powder coat. Super simple. throw into the oven. This is a homemade oven stand that my dad built. If you guys want to see this thing, I'll show you another video. over now that's what I was talking about so now I'll wait two more minutes until it's fully glossed 400 for 10 minutes and it's done it's gonna take like an hour to cool off Nice and shiny. I didn't go with the gray. I didn't have gray powder coats. So I went with the gloss black. So it kind of tied the truck and the hitch together with the two colors. The two blocks, you'll see after I get it all together, I just spray painted, found a spray paint that's pretty close to the same color as the gray. So is what it is, making it work. All right, everything looks like it's in place. I'm gonna get all the bolts in. I'm gonna get them torqued. I forgot what the torque rating is. So here's a clip of the video when I originally put it up of the torque rating. That's 100. 10 foot pounds well check this thing out it's finished it looks pretty good all set up in there i got it greased up ready to go i'm excited oh by the way i sneezed and my mustache fell off i don't know how that happened <laughs> you know i kind of like that i made these side brackets black because it kind of ties the truck in with the hitch i kind of kept everything in the middle of the hitch gray but it looks good now the old style when these brackets weren't in here you actually had to tighten the center bolt down and torque it before you put this on but now that i have enough room in here i can assemble everything on top of the bed tighten this down now so i all i have to do is climb up onto the bed drop the hitch in come down here put in the pin and just torque that down i think it's like 65 foot pounds and then it's done this video is probably going to be like a three-part video i got the hitch done the hitch is installed i have to work on the floor now because i got to make a cover when the hitch is not installed and then i also want to make somewhere some kind of mounting place for the hitch i think i'm going to put it up on the headache rack up there i'm not 100 percent sure yet so that'll be like a three-part video of this entire thing but next episode i am going to tow a fifth wheel camper it's not my camper it is going to be somebody else's camper but i'm going to bring it home from them right as the kingpin is right about here you start lifting the axles up and back up the rest of the way and clunk it should go right in there now this is normal because the bed is obviously here i understand that so you guys don't have to comment on that but you just lift either lift the trailer a little bit higher or lower the truck down it'll go underneath the kingpin kingpin will go boop 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 and you put the air in and then psh, clunk it will lock right in so we're gonna give it a test next episode you guys will see how it does hopefully this thing tows a trailer good the trailer is i think 40 trailer's like 40 42 feet somewhere around there and it weighs about 15,000 pounds so it'll be good got that planned you guys should check that video out 
Well, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching Gallery Garage. I'll see you guys at the next one. Boom, I got a gooseneck.